artists and animators. Toon Boom Animation commissioned Tony Ross and the Tony Teach team to develop training material to introduce artists working in Harmony Premium. Uh, now available on the animation study, the self-directed course you can animate in Harmony covers drawing tools, rigging and animating with pegs and deformers, cutout animation, as well as working with the multiplane camera. So we invited the Tony Teach team to discuss their work on this project, as well as their advice to artists who are just starting out in animation. And joining us are Tony Ross and Lamont Russ. Welcome to the stream. Thank you. Thank you for that awesome little intro. I appreciate it. So let's go around the table. Uh, Tony, uh, please introduce yourself, your history in animation, and your role on this project. Uh, my name is Tony Ross of TonyTeach.com, and I've been teaching, I think, um, probably over two decades. Uh, it's, uh, as far as teaching computer graphics and things like that, I learned Photoshop when it didn't even have layers. Uh, and my relationship with animation has been um, a long, long one. And my relationship with Toon Boom has been a little over 10 years now, not working directly with them. But uh, the first time I saw the software, I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. Um, this again was about maybe 13 years ago. Like it was, it was and I wrote, I was just like, I, I just saw this in action. I, I want to use this because I was using the uh, another program. Uh, and at the time it was funny, the, uh, they were saying it's called, they referred to it as the F word. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so, uh, yeah, I've been I've been using the software for a while. I don't consider myself an animator. I consider myself more of a teacher or a trainer. And what I love about uh, the software, and it's not not because I actually work for you all a lot and because you pay me, uh, but what I love about the software, it allows you to animate. You're not having to trick the program into doing something. Um, so yeah, that's been that's been my thing and. Um, my, I'll close with saying the, well, I'll close with my intro saying the following. I've never technically worked in production. I've done some little one-offs for clients here and there, but I think my gift and curse at the same time is my background is teaching. So I approach teaching Harmony and teaching Toon Boom software. It's a totally different way than someone um, who's actually been in the studio, so. Okay. And if anyone's ever tried to uh, teach someone animation, uh, teaching and, and production animation are two totally different skills. Yes. Uh, related, but different. Yeah. And uh, Lamont, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your history in animation, and your role on this project? Yes, I can do that. Uh, first of all, I promise y'all I'm a real person, not just an image on the screen. Uh, you know, as such is the way that happens with technology nowadays. But anyways. Um, I have been working in the entertainment industry since about 2007, and I started out with uh, Adult Swim and Cartoon Network as a 2D animator and uh, a background painter on like multiple shows on, on from those networks. Um, uh, I think I was a lot stronger in the. Uh, 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 digital background animation. So I usually got put into there, although I can do 2D animation. In fact, when I started, we were still doing 2D animation by hand on yes. pegs. So I learned the very, very old school way um, of doing it. And I actually worked in studios uh, um, doing the traditional stuff. Um, so it it was interesting to get on the Toon Boom because it was the first program that I got as far as 2D animation that functioned like traditional hand-drawn animation and everything that I learned while I was working, um, uh, um, working in the studios doing that stuff. Now, over the years, of course, you know, for uh, animation, you know, we switched to programs that were a lot easier and made us uh, become a more, uh, a pipeline more streamlined and everything like that. So, um, other uh, animation programs got introduced, but even nowadays, I still I still work for animation studios, and most of them actually do use Toon Boom because it does exactly what it needs it to. It allows an animator to be an animator 
um, whether they were trained traditionally or, um, you know, came up in the digital world of animation. Um, so I like all of the options that it has for you to function as that type of artist instead of just like Tony said, instead of tricking the program to do doing what you needed to do. Also, Tony was my teacher too. So, <laughs> and I mean like not just in Toon Boom, like in school. So <laughs> we go way back. Yeah. He has been teaching All right. me for a very long time and I've been driving him crazy for just as much. Uh, and you want, oh, my role on this uh, project was, um, yeah, yeah I, I handled the background artwork. Uh, we also handled a little bit of the character designs with a couple of other artists that we had on board. Uh, because like I said, I've, I've done 2D animation, character design, all of that stuff. But I feel I'm the strongest with uh, creating backgrounds. So that's where I kind of place myself. So uh, I, I would like to take credit for the background mostly, but I would say that the character designing was like a team effort with all of us. All right, that's awesome. So uh, let's get into the project then. Uh, how would you describe the materials that you made for You Can Animate in Harmony? And what are some of the techniques that you cover throughout the 18 videos in this series? Um, well, what had happened was, um, <laughs> I was I was reached out and she told me not to give her a shout out. Uh, love you, Stephanie. Uh, I was reached <laughs> out to you by uh, Stephanie Quinn uh, from Toon Boom, and she said I I saw the you did a because I was like Toon Boom has y'all. I love y'all, but y'all have the I have never figured out why y'all have a twenty one day trial. And I was like, it's not a thirty day trial; it's a twenty one day trial. I was like, okay, cool. What if I made a twenty one day boot camp? And Stephanie uh, reached out to me and said, hey, we saw the boot camp. Can you make something like that for us? I'm like, sure. Um, and so that's kind of how it came about. And uh, what I love about you all, this is this is going to sound like I'm going gush over Toon Boom the entire time. But I, <laughs> I, I, this is what I feel. Um, you guys are big enough to be awesome, but you're small enough to listen. And I remember hanging out in Miami with the sales team. And... We we're talking about things, and I would say, like, you guys, the, the tutorials are great, but a lot of times it's scaring the crap out of people. You need to ease them into the awesome. <laughs> it's like, don't like, because, like, I, I I try not to, um, like, for instance, if I'm teaching, um, I'm not, what you're looking at right here, for instance, the node view. I'm not going to show anyone the node view probably the first day or two they're working in this program. It doesn't exist. I'm not going to mention pegs. I'm not going to mention any of that stuff. Um and I think that's what we did with the uh, whole Ceno project. I mean, you don't you don't see Ceno in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You actually start animating like little dots and like getting you comfortable with the with the program, getting students to do uh, what I call a moment of wow within the first. Any even when I'm teaching a live class, um, we'll be sitting there at like a uh, ten after four or whatever. And I'm like, okay, great. Before five o'clock, you're going to have your first animation. Give them that moment of wow. So the program stops being intimidating because especially if they're familiar with Adobe software, they come here and it's like, this looks nothing like that. Um, so you have to, you have to give them something in the program to make it a lot less scary and go, I, I think I can do this and then introduce them to pieces bit by bit. So we go from literally in the project going from animating dots in the very first, um, uh, in the very first lesson to by the end of the lesson, you're actually animating C note and all of this little rig, all these little crazy cables and nodes here. Uh, you go through learning all of that. And in theory, we built it so you can actually figure it out in 21 days, just download the demo and just follow everything. So. Yeah. I remember you telling me too, that uh, you used to run um, parents of animation students uh, through the dot exercise, where yes. uh... <laughs> well, I mean, it's that I was when once when I was when I was teaching college, they said we we have parents visiting today. Um, can you show them something? I said, how long do I have them? It's like you have them about forty five minutes. I was like, well, hell, I'll have them animating, and then I would request make sure we get into the uh, Cintiq room and have them doing that assignment, that little dot assignment. Uh, so it's again that whole thing of not not like my kid. They're not like my kid is animating. I'm like, holy crap, I animated something today. I, I got to see the software. It was awesome. Do you do the thing with the cells? Like, yeah, cool. Uh, <laughs> kind of get them on that level. Uh, and I think it's 
it's again, it's again that kind of little thing that gets them excited about it, but makes the software. I mean, if you look at this, those of you, if anyone's watching this and have never actually seen the interface before, this is a little intimidating. Um, the node view is definitely intimidating. How do you make it uh, a little less frightening? And then, okay, great, let's introduce you into a little bit more uh, step by step, though. Yeah, and uh, I know, so Lamont, uh, I know a big contribution from you was uh, the backgrounds, and we can get into those a little bit later in this interview. Okay. Um, but uh, I know you also mentioned, too, that C-Note, uh, the character that we have on screen right now, is sort of a group effort uh, with the team at uh, Tony Teach. So can you tell us a little bit about how the team developed the character? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, um... Everyone on the team has had some sort of experience with Toon Boom itself uh, already, or they're like uh, really, really, really good. Um, I consider myself to be uh, intermediate, if you will, uh, with Toon Boom, because again, uh, uh, most of the work that I do nowadays for animation is just background stuff. So even to this day, I'm still learning from Tony how to translate my background skills over to you know Toon Boom. I literally go, hey, look, I just painted this thing. How do I make it in Toon Boom? And we start figuring things out to get that started. But anyways, we're going back to the character. Um, yeah, well, we I wanted... mean, what's interesting about that too is that, 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 that you're describing the animation pipeline basically, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, we have all these different pieces of software. How do we get files from one to the other? And I think that's a really important skill for people to learn. Oh, definitely, definitely. Especially as soon as you uh, find out that it can be done all of it in here it, it it feels really good especially not having to jump back and forth between programs and everything it's like it takes a huge weight off your shoulders you feel like iron man once you like i've created an entire entire project in this one uh, uh program I, was, I i love it it's perfect um but <laughs> let's go so to the character uh we were trying to figure out um, Tony gave us the idea of, uh, like what he just said earlier, of um, how to get people to interact with Toon Boom without being uh, terrified of the interface. So basically, how to get them animating without them like going through a whole master class of, of four years of a Disney course or something. So we wanted to come up with a character that is very simple that utilizes only the very bare minimum basics of uh, Toon Boom's interface and animating capabilities. So it's like, I, I don't need this guy to be able to do uh, a, a 360 roundhouse kick flip. I don't need him to be able to um, play uh, Bohemian Rhapsody correctly with every finger position. I just need him to be able to move very simple. So we, we kept in mind the idea of the uh, traditional animating the bouncing ball technique, and we, we kind of transferred that to a character. How would we do the bouncing ball simple animation on a character? And so that's where we started putting our head together. And one of the areas that we went to, first of all, was just all the, the, uh, the Hanna-Barbera uh, style of characters where you can definitely see his influence in there. And we picked that because, uh, all of us being students of animation, we know how simple it was for them back then to animate those characters. Um, this is, again, back when there is no digital stuff. Everybody was doing it by hand on pegs with pencils, just killing themselves for it. And everything that you saw on screen, someone had to hand draw that. It was grueling. So... Uh, they wanted to make it as simple as possible, as very simple as possible to show uh, the animation and what's going on and to be able to tell the, the joke. So we kept that in mind. It was like, let's, let's start with that as the foundation. Let's start with a character that looks like he was built or made for Hanna-Barbera style of animation. So we started with that. And then we uh, just started just brainstorming about what we like, period, as artists or animators when it comes to the types of cartoons that we like. So we definitely don't, uh, would dive back into the classics. You're talking about Looney Tunes, Tiny Toon Adventures, uh, Pie Pie, Felix the Cat. Just, I mean, we were just 
throwing out cartoon ideas. Oh man, that'd be awesome. This was awesome. Where that character was awesome, and then eventually it ended on a cat. But <laughs> uh, I don't even think that it necessarily, at, when we first started, was going to be like a musician. I think that came later with Tony after he ended up talking to uh, the Marcus, who is the very talented voice actor for it. Um, and it just started, uh, he just started growing as a character himself. The more we talked about it, the more we uh, had an idea of what we wanted him to do. It just, he just kind of like evolved himself. Um, when, when that happens, we did multiple, multiple sketches of uh, how we think that he would look, especially when we got uh, like the voice work back from DeMarcus, just hearing different types of voices that c knows can possibly have. Um, that was like fuel for us as an artist to just like, okay, what if he looks like this? What if he looks like this? What if he's sitting like this? What if, what if his eyes blink like this? Like, what if he uh, talks like this? It, like, we developed the full character. And Tony had to ring us back a couple of times because we were basically making like a full animated Disney character. It's like, no, it's supposed to be simple. Bouncy ball, bouncy ball, bouncy ball. It's like, oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, um, yeah, and then I believe towards the end, we basically just um, pulled the parts from everyone's drawing into the final image. So I like the eyes from this character. I like the ears from this character. I like the fur from this character. I like the tail from this character. I like the fingers from this. So he's just mutated out of all of our drawings into what you see before you now. Yeah. I kind of like this idea of like designed by exquisite corpse. Um, <laughs> you ever played that game? <laughs> well, I mean, in the the other thing that I, the my number one thing with the C Note project was, and much love to, uh, much love and no disrespect to the other people who've actually, I like a lot of tutorials that are out there, especially if they go, hey, you're going to learn how to animate this character. To me, a lot of times it felt like people were very careful not giving their pride and joy. You know, they'll do some sort of generic looking character um, for the tutorial. Well, you guys can have this one, but not, not this guy. He's special. Um, and so literally what, what are the, what are the reasons? Like I didn't draw. <laughs> it's like, let me, let me, let, let, let me give you something to bleep out. I didn't draw shit. So, so <laughs> I, I hired people that can draw better than me. So uh, bringing in uh, Kat Hudson, Chris Cartledge, and Lamont, and having them, I said, okay, great. He's got flip flops with socks. He's got this, and yes, uh, he's he plays a music. He's a, he's a street musician. Um, by the way, is C note a play on words because we're in harmony? Yeah, yeah, it is. And so <laughs> the idea of putting that together and saying he has to be meme worthy, he has to be a character you would put on a T-shirt. Um, part of the conversation I had with um, shout out to Bradley and Bernard because um, they were showing me the the reel. I was like, yeah, but the, the, here's the reel. It's like I said, yes, but who is this character and why do I give a damn? Um, would it be something like could C Note could literally have his own little spinoff? And we kind of did it on kind of played with that idea. So uh, let's talk about the character rig then. Um, why is this character rig ideal for introducing artists to animating using cutout techniques and harmony? And I, I can see there are a few things that are really cool about it. You know, he's got a guitar, he's sitting on a box. Uh, how is it helpful? Um, well, there are a couple of things that are going on. Uh, we built the, like, this is what, in, in node language, this is kind of a flat rig. There's no hidden groups here. It's everything is this plain um, that you can actually see it here. Also, uh, the idea of him sitting on, he's sitting on a, a musical instrument called a cajon. Um, and this is kind of like a little drumming or a little percussion thing. So we have it set up where he's actually uh, slapping ca the uh, cajon with his tail. Um, and just having little simple things, like even though the arms technically are, if I, re if I remember right, they're kind of, yeah. Um, the arms are pretty much like straight out and then we have them connected to the hands. We did a little bit of rubber hose um, meaning that uh, we have deformers, like a different kind of deformer on his arm there. Um, and 
where part of this is the uh, part of the beauty of this is like we have the entire body. If I go to my eye, let's see if I can do this one. Go to my drawing view. The body itself is just this weird little thumb um, that goes all the way up into the head. <laughs> and we did oh oh my god we did something this this is and this really pissed Lamont off. Uh, <laughs> we, we had several conversations about this. How simple is this? Uh, C notes eyes. Um, it's literally, so I can go here. I think that's that one. Let me see if I can show you this because it's kind of funny. Um, yeah. Okay. There was the, the, <laughs> right? so we actually there's it's actually this one little this one little eight there, and the eyeballs are they're together. They're not left and right because <laughs> I was like, yeah, it could be, but that would add to the we, that we that would make the rig more complex. So we kept it ridiculously simple. Um, and stayed within those limitations uh, with the idea of there was at least one or two times um, harmony is a blessing and a curse. Uh, if you know, there, there are people who, who I know very well. It's like, hey, we need to do this thing. And then they go, great. Here's how we're going to bring in all these extra nodes and we're going to make it a 360. I'm like, wait, 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 pull that back. Um, and even during <laughs> the project, I was doing something and I was like, man, I want this to do this right. So I'm literally going into little forums and going, how would you do this? That And I ended up doing this for about 48 hours before I had to say, if I'm teaching beginners and I have to write into a forum a question that I don't know the answer to, then I need to rethink <laughs> this part of the tutorial. Mm. That's the problem with a lot of things like that. I, I know, and no, no disrespect to... Um, there, there's some really awesome, complex things you can do with Harmony. Yeah. But my wheelhouse is going. Hey, you never touch the program. Let's go. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. Are you are you going to see a lot of the heavy lifting in here? No. But can you get enough uh, to one uh, blow, uh, flash, or animate out of the water? Yeah. Hell, you can do that with um, essentials. That's another story. Um, <laughs> so, so the idea of being able to do something simple enough that you could uh, do on your own. And um, I'm trying not to be too long-winded on this. The issue with C-Note, or the cool thing about C-Note, um, he does the thing that I always get on Lamont and I get on um, some of my other colleagues about. The, people will build a rig as if a studio is animating it, but they're trying to animate on their own. I'm going, no, build out a character that you could animate two to three minutes easy on your own. You know, And that's what C-Note's about. Yeah, it it's uh definitely and 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 we're coming from a space because you're talking about teaching complete beginners whether they have any kind of um, um artistic ability or if they're coming you know somebody like me I'm a seasoned animator so that's why like he said I was getting frustrated because I've been trained to move this thing <laughs> and I'm like what what do you mean there's only one eye. <laughs> like he's got two pupils there. I, I need to be able to move them. And so it's training me to uh, start from scratch. I know you know all of this stuff, Lamont, but we need to start here because this needs to be simple enough for people who hasn't had your decade or so of training. This needs to be very simple. Like even with having the legs or, or the fact that we had him sit on the box was something that we did forcefully so it would keep people like me from wanting to animate the legs. And, you know, because I'm like, oh, well, his legs are still and I need to be able to move them or or bounce them around or what. No, that's too much. That's too much work for him from what we need him to do. He just needs to be a simple character right now. We can get into all that stuff later. <laughs> but right now, and it was it was really good. It was a challenge for me because it's like, God, I've animated Aqua Teen Hunger Force and I've animated Flapjack and you you got me going back to Fred Flintstone. <laughs> it's like he's got just two poses, that's it. But it was great because I didn't have to the, the goal was I didn't have to focus on animating per se. I, I only had to focus on learning the program. And um and that was easy. It was easier than than trying to do two things at one time as in like i'm trying to be an artist and animate him but i'm also trying to learn this program at the same time and us as artists can like get in our way 
when, you know, oh, my God, I just learned the deformer. Now I want this guy to, like, be able to backflip and karate kick through a window, like, right now. And it's like, no, 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 not yet. Not yet. You just, I just need him to sit there and bounce. That's it. So, yeah. yeah so, so I think we can, we can also focus on all the things that this rig doesn't do. But this rig also, like, teaches people to do a lot. I mean, you have a character yes. that is holding onto a prop, sitting on top of another prop, uh, doing lip sync uh, and, and different facial expressions um, with multiple limbs, uh, five. Um, that is a lot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and I like that you can do so much with uh, a very, very simple rig. Um, I have seen, um, uh, you know, I've worked for animation studios that, I look at their rig and it just looks like a bowl of spaghetti in that node. Oh, <laughs> so it is. You guys know what I'm talking about when it looks like that. It's like you see the animation. Oh my God, that's amazing. It's amazing. Let me see how this character is built. And you look at that node view and it's, oh, I can't. Oh, what did you do? <laughs> so seeing yeah. a simple rig like this, it's like, oh, it's really good to start a foundation. And you could easily, once you learn this stuff, then you can easily, you know, pimp this rig out and make it do even more. But this is a great start, a great foundation to get a character to do a lot of stuff um, with a little simple, simple rig. Let's see, um, the one thing I, um, I always tell people, like, if you want to see how complex the rig is, and this is what I normally do is, like, select the main peg and then go, okay, show all the deformers. Are there a lot of deformers here? Yes. Uh, is his body an envelope deformer? No, no, it's not. It's actually a bone deformer. Um, just kind of handling everything. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of playing around with that. Uh, doing some things that, uh, what is it? A couple of season, uh, some, some of my seasoned friends, they don't even like bone deformers. Does he have them? Yep. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, they're right there. Uh, they don't even like curved deformers. Does he have them? Yeah, they're right here. Matter of fact, his, uh, his tail, and that's the other thing. His tail is a little bit complex because it actually does go behind and in front of things. Um, at least I think it does. I can't remember. <laughs> so it's, like, it's been a while since I looked at the rig. But, uh, it does look like it's doing that, so that is that is impressive. Yeah, it's like uh, just little little pieces. Like I think the, uh, the, cone, the cone itself uh, designing things out like, okay, let's make a, I think the overlay of this is actually sitting in front of the tail versus uh, uh, the other part there. And this is a uh, had Lamont uh, re uh, cartoonerized somebody's <laughs> logo. <laughs> so yeah, we, did, we had, I think we had a lot of fun with it. So. Oh yeah, we did. I noticed that we've got a few comments uh, in the chat on Twitch that are talking about um, they're afraid of the node view or the node view can be scary. Um, Tony, is there anything that you can say that could reassure people about the node view? Anything they may want to know? I, I want to share, if I can share something, and this is, actually, this is literally, uh, shout out to uh, Kat Hudson and as well as um, Lar Laren DeJarnett. Um, they are talented people who've done a lot of character design and, and they've got all this history. But uh, that was the other part of me bringing the team together. I had uh, uh, Chris and I, who know Harmony pretty well, uh, Lamont, who kind of knows it, and then yeah. you had Kat, who's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I, if you want to, ever, if you ever learn this, I'll teach you. So we had that going on. So what we would do was, we would take some of the tutorials when we were doing the um, the node view, and I would show Cat and go, "Does that make sense to you?" I'd send it to Laren again, who'd never touched Harmony before. Does this make sense? Are you able to follow this? So I want to share with you uh, one of my things, the ways that I like to in um, I like to introduce the node view because I don't do typically the uh, what is that called? I don't do a um, I don't do the uh, little bouncing ball. I do it a different way. So I'm going to play this little clip here from the behind the scenes. I'm going to show you the node view in my way first. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just doing a uh, uh, what I call a legless walk cycle. So like all of the... Uh, the um, like You the see this happen, happen in a, a lot of anime where or <laughs> where the character kind of muppets 
toward you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, cool. So like the Flintstone just, walk cycle? Something like that, but <laughs> you don't see the legs. You just see their if they're coming toward you, that's it. Yeah, if they're coming, sorry, sorry. If they're coming toward you. Um, it's like they're going, eh, 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 eh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Archer okay. does that a lot. They, they don't show the legs a lot. Right. Yeah. So the idea is you True. you draw the yeah. you have the drawing and then you have one peg that's going th- that's doing this. Oh, okay. And then you take that peg and attach it to another peg that literally moves it forward in the Z space. So it goes like this. Gotcha. So that's how I teach pegs. And that's one of the things we're going to do with, um, with C-Note. Because so you're going to cut off our cat's legs? <laughs> <Marshall, yes. laughs> Why would you even have us draw legs on this cat then? Oh, no, I could have just made, done a jelly bean. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's probably my favorite thing of teaching uh, because again, it's like okay, here's especially uh, young people who've actually seen that. I mean, well, I'm, I'm saying young people, technically from Scooby Doo, the original Scooby Doo, all the way up to now, they they've seen that thing where they're going, yeah, this character, they're just having this conversation walking toward you. Eh, they they have no legs, uh, but kind of showing, yes, here's how you can actually make that bounce up and down. That's holding. A, that's a peg. That's one peg. Take another peg and attach it to that. And move it forward. And then showing them, by the way, if we turn the visibility off of those pegs, that artwork is just sitting there and teaching them it's a much more efficient way of working uh, than just animating the artwork. So. Yeah, uh, well, when you mentioned, uh, I didn't even make the connection until you mentioned, uh, yeah, I have my own version of the, 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 the bouncy ball. Uh, and it is like two pegs that that is responsible for the the, the Muppet Walk. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, and, so, and that's that's the the beauty of um, when I was first learning cutout animation, someone actually mentioned the Muppets, <laughs> um, and I and I like to use that as an example also because um, when you think about it, if you've done your job the right way with cutout animation, it doesn't necessarily look like it's cutout animation. Um, and with respect to the Muppets. Uh, Miss Piggy nor Kermit blink. They don't blink at all. But you still look at them and they're, they're alive. And if you can pull that off with uh, the movements of your, uh, your cutout character, you should be able to still give them that illusion of life. So. All right, so I, I wanted to ask Lamont. Uh, so the backgrounds in the training material um, look very similar to Toon Boom's office in Montreal. Uh, I, I wanted to ask what sort of planning went into the background and what considerations went into working uh, to, to making this scene work in, with, with the 3D camera. Oh, we took a flight out there. And basically... <laughs> in the middle of COVID, yes, we did that, yeah. <laughs> took a flight out there. Uh, I shot the camera. I walked backwards very slowly. I brought it into Toon Boom and, uh, and hit filter cartoon eight this is what came out <laughs> so no, if um, i remember correctly that the, the, there was sort of a, a contentious argument of how many layers this should be oh wow, wow. yeah hold on, hold, on. <laughs> hold, on. hold on i gotta find that one because it's hilarious hold on. okay there we go, there we go. That we did a, who's doing what what is lamont working on and what am i working on <laughs> well, you're both doing backgrounds so chris you're doing you're handling it in vector um whether it's in illustrator or done in harmony lamont is handling it the same thing in bitmap more of a painterly type way c note's going to be dropping in um both of those for the site we're talking about here's how it'd be set up in um Photoshop. Here's how it would be set up in Illustrator. Chris, if you're doing Illustrator, um, just let me know which one. I can do that. But the main goal is, Chris, don't complicate this. I want three layers. I want <laughs> middle ground background. Yeah. How about all the other grounds? No. No. <laughs> I can do it, though. I know you can. I, and no one's doubting you. <laughs> I'm doubting it. I don't think you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, shutting up. <laughs> Every brush mark on its own layer. <laughs> <laughs> that way, Tony has you know some layers to work with when he. That's right. He likes it, and don't name the layers either. <laughs> That just confuses things. Oh, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my wow. gosh, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. 
<laughs> so so Lamont, is, is that like actual advice? Like don't don't layer things just every last <laughs> year <I> build. <laughs> that is like an a digital artist sin to not <laughs> make <laughs> your layers. You will easily make enemies or or get fired or something <laughs> like it is horrible to open up a file and it's got layer one through layer 136 <laughs> nothing's named oh that's horrible um no don't do that i was just joking around i, yeah. I told you we every once in a while we we become tony's disgruntled uh uh students <laughs> so we like to mess with them no that's not no we we did it as simple as possible um hey mike so, sorry go ahead yeah shoot um if if uh, before we run out of time, I do want to give out um, because uh, uh, he's not here, but I at least I at least want to show a clip. Um, shout out to uh, Mr. Uh, Demarcus Hill who handled the voice of C Note, and I want to do a quick clip of um, this is uh, you can kind of see him over in the corner, but this is literally this isn't wasn't staged. This is literally we had a Zoom call, and I showed him the image, and. I told him what I wanted and he kind of spat it back out. Um, he's like, he's scary. So I wanted to actually share this real quick. Hold on. I don't I don't know why I always lean to Michael J, but hear me out, hear me out. Um, Michael J. Fox? Yeah. Wolfman Jack meets Michael J. Fox. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. How's that going like that? Is that, yeah, yeah, a little smoother in there, like that? Yeah, like that, yeah, yes. Like that, yeah, okay. Because <laughs> he does seem a little happy, yeah. He does seem a little happy. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, yes, that, like that's, that. yeah. that's where we are. That's it. <laughs> we know. All right. If you want me to stay, I'll be around today. <laughs> we got the, yeah, we got the whole thing is whatever whatever song we gotta find, we gotta find a public domain, but yes, that is oh yeah, yeah, I guess okay, okay. <laughs> but yeah, awesome. I want to give a shout out so to talented. Him. Yes, awesome. he's he's scary. Demarcus is the uh, uh, and again he's kind of somebody we we've I've I've worked with um, a lot and a lot of times I'll say yeah do that voice and I literally have to play a recording back because he has like thousands of voices in his head he's crazy he's like Mel Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know we started a little bit late because of technical issues I just wanted to go through before we end uh, with two questions. Go ahead. Uh, one is uh, for for both Tony and for uh, Lamont. Um, do you have advice for artists who are starting out in animation? You mind you want to take that first or you want me to go? Um, oh, okay. Starting out in animation. Figure out exactly what it is that you want to do in animation because there are multiple jobs in studios. Um, figure out if you, even if you even want to go to a studio because nowadays you guys have more outlets and opportunities to put your work out than, than what we had earlier. Uh, when I was starting. So, I mean, like, you can run your whole U uh, studio on YouTube and do, like, a full animation by yourself if you want to. Um, so figure out what you want to do, whether it's a character animation, where a uh, character animator, uh, whether it be uh, uh, special effects animator, um, props animation, uh, background, character designs, whatever. There's different departments for each of those. Figure out which one you love the best that you have like a super passion for that you're clearly really good at. And then figure out what studio you would like to work for and make sure that your work reflects uh, that type of animation or that style of animation or that style of art, period. Now, you definitely don't want to like go and apply to work at My Little Pony if your stuff looks like He-Man on Netflix. You know, they... Well, you look like you can animate, but I'm not sure if you can animate cute little ponies. So <laughs> that's the biggest thing. Everything else will just fall into place for you once you just start, uh, uh, you know, going through the process of just filling out applications and looking for a job. But just keep that drive. Keep that passion going. You're going to be doing a lot of this drawing and art stuff every day, day in and day out. So make sure you love it, uh, which whatever part of it that you decide to pick. That said, I, I think there might be an audience for like a powerhouse animation, My Little Pony. I, I feel like people, <laughs> I, there are um, certain people who really dig that. 
Yeah. I'll run that up the ladder to them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tony, what's your advice? Um, my advice is it's kind of almost a generic art thing, but I'll, I'll put this up. Matter of fact, um, anything creative. Um, and this is going to sound cheesy, but hear me out. Uh, I think a lot of people, to anyone listening to this, you've had at least three awesome ideas today. You've already talked yourself out of them. Quit that. Um, you literally have to kind of say, fuck it, and just kind of go for it. You have to go through the idea of what's the worst that can happen and just move forward. Um, you can't sit around waiting for Superman when you're Clark Kent. Uh, and I think that's the problem. And I have to tell myself that a lot of times because it's, it's literally, I'm sitting here with, as I say, like, like You've got, even like I said, I, I've talked about this before, like you, between Harmony Essentials, Harmony Advance, and definitely Harmony Premium, I have sitting in front of me something that, again, doesn't have to be really, really complex, but you can put something out there. No one's stopping. You, you don't need anyone's permission. You can put it on YouTube. Hell, you can actually make your own Roku channel. No one is stopping you. Um, just kind of go for it. You don't need anyone's permission other than your own you need you only need your own permission to be awesome and i think a lot of artists um because we do have issues we either let the voice in our head or someone else tell us well no you can't do that um screw that do it anyway um well it shouldn't be this way or you shouldn't do this way. yeah whatever um and trust me, Mott's told me several times, yeah, yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah, shut up. Anyways, <laughs> you just gotta, you just gotta do it. Um, and I'll close with saying, if you, if you know me well enough, you know I'm a huge Prince fan. What a lot of people don't know is why. If you look on the back of early Prince albums, it simply said produced, written, arranged, and performed by Prince. Like he didn't need anybody. So I mean, hell, even the first the first Times album was completely played by Prince, just with Morris Day's voice on top of it. So the idea that a program like Harmony allows you to get away with that. You can go in and say, I'm going to sketch this out. I don't draw that well, but I'm going to make this little character. I'm going to put a funny story behind it. I'll develop it a little bit better and just keep going with it. No one is stopping you. Even if someone says your work is crap, whatever, I'm going to put my crappy artwork out. Just do it. Mm. So that's my All right. And my most, my most important question, uh, where can our viewers find more of your work on the web? <laughs> um well i'm at tonyteach.com um and we have like tutorials uh little things that are up there and we're in the process of doing more like doing little weekend workshops and things like that um i think that's the, the most accurate place to find me uh currently it'll 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 be more frequent later i do have some things on youtube i just haven't done them in a while and as for me, um, uh, one of the first things that you can do is just Google search Logan Russ Art and anything connected to me is going to be there. I know my name's Lamont, but on social media, it's Logan <laughs> because I'm a firm believer in keeping some of your personal stuff to yourself. <laughs> but with that, you'll find me on uh, ArtStation at, under Logan Russ. You'll find Logan Concept Design on Instagram. You'll find logan art studio on instagram so i am on those you know big platforms but like i said you can just type logan russ art in the google and a bunch of stuff will pop up for me as far as my artwork is concerned we need to actually do, animate the story of logan Ooh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. that's a netflix what series a, right there what a, what a full series it'll have to be on hbo max probably yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. Pretty maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. All right. Thank you so much, Tony and Lamont, as well as to Chris and Kat, who couldn't join us today. Um, and I'd also like to thank everyone who's joined us for today's discussion. If you enjoyed the conversation and are interested in the You Can Animate in Harmony course, you can find the uh, links to tutor tutorial videos at theanimationstudy.com. I believe the course is just $35, and uh, it is a great introduction to animating in Harmony Premium. 
We'll be taking July off and we'll return in August for our next round of videos that you will not want to miss. Thank you for watching and be sure to tune in next time. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.